Hey, this is Laren. I've got a brand new book to talk about. It is called The Story of Knife Steel, Innovators Behind Modern Damascus and Super Steels. So you might know about my original book, uh, Knife Engineering, the first book I ever wrote. It was about the engineering of knives, you know, how to optimize steel choices and heat treating and edge geometry for performance. But my new book is a little bit of a departure from that in that this is more about the history of metallurgy and knife makers in steel selection and heat treating, how it's evolved over the years. Uh, if you're not into history, uh, please don't turn off the video. I am not someone who's particularly interested in history either, but I thought that the innovations behind knives and knife steel are a lot more fascinating. And it's called the story of knife steel because it's really about the people and what they did, the innovations uh, behind everything. So I have a lot of firsthand accounts, uh, some that I got myself by interviewing people, some from historical sources, you know, like magazine articles or books, etc. And this book covers a lot of material. So it's, you know, over 500 pages. It's a very large book. There is lots of history in here. And I interweave the stories of metallurgists with the stories of knife makers, and especially the times when they come together. So for example, the alloying of steel started when a scientist, Michael Faraday, and a knife maker, James Stodart, came together to try to replicate the Indian famous sword steel woots. So that kicked off everything in the very early 1800s. And uh, there are more stories like that in the book. So it covers the invention of tool steel, the discovery of high-speed steel, uh, various alloy steels, and then we get into knives. So chapter four is carbon steel USA factory knives. You know, what steels were they using? What hardness what were they targeting? When did they start moving into alloy steels instead of simple carbon steels? Then early custom knife makers in the USA, and the development of steel, the development of stainless steel. Uh, the story of how stainless steel was developed is not that hard to find, but definitely knife steels post early stainless steels, like into 440 A, B, and C steels, that is very hard to find. You can't read about that anywhere. I had to find all of those sources. Also, the invention of D2 was really interesting, how it intersects with this guy named Kuhnrich. He also worked on uh, razors, which used a variant of D2 called D5. So he invented those steels, and then they were slightly modified by another guy in America to make D2. So that's just a taste of some of the initial history. Then we get into the modern custom knife market, uh, Bill Moran, Bob Loveless, A.G. Russell, uh, who started using 440C and D2 and A2 and custom knives, Bob Loveless introducing 154CM, uh, then the Knife Makers Guild is really the start of the modern custom knife industry. Also talk about factory knives, how they evolved, where we have these specialty knife companies like Spyderco and Benchmade, uh, a bunch of others, Microtech. Talk about their formation, what steels they were using, what innovations were behind that, the development of S30V. And then I've got 12 chapters on Damascus. So maybe you know, maybe you don't, my father... Devin Thomas, he is famous for his Damascus and his stainless Damascus. So I've got a full history of the evolution of materials used in Damascus, who was selling Damascus, and also the evolution of patterning techniques. Again, this information is not available in any other place. Uh, this is all a lot of new interviews. I tracked through old books and magazines finding when patterns first showed up because the Damascus makers are really bad with dates, as are most of us. Uh, then the references, I've got my favorite references in bold in the book. You see, I got some bold references. So I've got a, a million references in here, a bunch of magazine articles that you can still access online, uh, various books. So all my favorites are in bold. You should definitely read those. You want to learn more about individual people because I can only say so much. And I've got an index. That was a major complaint about knife engineering is there is no index. Uh, but this new book definitely have an index. And so I'm very happy with this book. I think it turned out great. Uh, initial reviews are very good. I think if you don't know how the uh, custom knife industry, the production knife industry got to how it is today, you should read this book. This is a really good introduction just to knife history in general in terms of the modern era. 
and it's really difficult to read otherwise unless you've just been reading magazine articles for the past 20 years or so. So this is in one place you get the history of how things got to how they are today. That includes knives made in Japan and Sweden, China, Taiwan, as well as Germany and the USA. Though I'd say USA is probably the most heavily featured in the book, but there are separate chapters on several of those other countries. Another thing to note, there are three formats for this book. So I have the hardcover here. There's also a paperback, which is somewhat less expensive. And uh, besides just the construction difference, there's also a printing difference. So you can see that the picture on the right here of the hardcover is a little more contrasty, a little more vibrant. The colors are a little brighter. Uh, so the printing quality is a little higher on the hardcover. Now I don't tell you this because I need you to buy the hardcover. My royalty is roughly the same regardless of which one you buy. But uh, if you want to save some money, go with the paperback. If you want the highest quality, go with the hardcover. The other option is the PDF. So the PDF also looks great. I'll zoom in a little bit. So the PDF is best for people with iPads, obviously. If you've got a big PC monitor and you like reading on one of those, that would also be fine, of course. Uh, so the PDF is also good for people in countries where this book is not printed, like it's currently not available in Australia, several other countries, you know, South America. You probably want to get the PDF just because importing can get expensive. Uh, the book is on fire sale right now on Amazon. So I'd recommend buying it soon. Those sales are done by Amazon robots. There's not much I can do about those. Uh, you never know if the price is going to go up again. So the hundreds of images in this book, lots of pictures of knives and how steel is made, etc. cetera. Uh, so I'm really happy with how the book turned out. And uh, printing costs are also going to go up June 20th, apparently. So the book will probably go up by a few dollars at that point. So yeah, definitely get it now. Uh, I really want to know what people think. Go and leave Amazon reviews when you read it. I'm really excited about this book. I put a lot of work into it, more work than I put into anything else I've done, honestly, for Knife Steel Nerds. And so I really want people to read the book. You know, I didn't spend those hundreds and hundreds of hours <laughs> writing this book for no one to read it. And uh, so, you know, it's selling pretty well so far, but I really want want some more people to read this book and to get feedback on it and uh, yeah, see what people think about the history of, of steel and knives. So thanks everybody. I hope you, you find this book interesting and let me know what you think. Bye-bye.